Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Well, Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got another, this is kind of a small one, but uh, hey, that's what's coming in these days, these little dinky onesies and twosies, which is fine by me, because uh, I get to stop and go on with something else. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a fairly complicated one, because it's long and it, basically I'm building a sleeve for the end of a motor and I believe it is a uh, it goes on to the end of a motor and this end goes on to the end of a vacuum drive or a vacuum system so that everything spins and there's a seal in there and it pulls a vacuum on it I'm not exactly sure what's going on but that, that's how he explained it to me and I'm going to bring you up close and show it to you. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. So we've got, uh, uh, you know, 916's hole, but of course it's a very specific size. And in reality, I made this for him once before. <laughs> and of course I didn't do it correctly. Uh, but for one, it was almost impossible to get that uh, that shaft that came through here this size was this uh, was all the way through to here so we're talking about you know five inches of hole that i have to figure out how to measure and um that's the difficult part but that's it's not too bad at this point the problem with this one was is i got it into the chuck i got it concentric I got it concentric this way and this way but the hole wasn't concentric and there was no way I could measure I could measure the front side of the hole and about halfway into it but I couldn't measure the back side of the hole and so consequently what happened was is that uh, when I sent it to him this the back side was off by a couple of thousands now this motor spins at you know 3200 rpm or something like that so a couple of thousands this thing is jumping all over the place so I told him to send it back and I'll do it again and so now we're going to use instead of using his old one we're going to use a solid billet here of aluminum and uh, I just happen to have this laying around that's why it's so big uh, so um, that's not going to cost me extra to buy the aluminum so uh, we're going to machine this down to size we're going to drill a hole all the way through it then we're going to bore the hole to that specific size and then we come well actually I think what I'm going to do is bore the big hole first so I can reach in there and take measurements on the small hole so there's the job and let's get to it all right so what I want to do first is uh, let me make sure this is tight and it wasn't of course uh, what I want to do first is rough this down to about this outside diameter size and we'll uh, start that by cranking on it let's come up with a bit that's going to work that should do the trick. There we go. All right, so go. faster than that, but I don't want to throw a bunch of chips all over the place. So I'm reasonably happy.
All right. Okay, now let's take it on in and see if we can reach. Looks like we're going to reach. Well, now let's take it in and get it leveled out, or squared up, and looks like we've got to come up a bit in order to get there. close. Now square. Right about there. And this thing's got a serious negative rake on it. Damn. Well, we'll give it a try. Sometimes the, the uh, insert itself will have a little bit of a dig to it, so it'll, hopefully it'll work here in this situation. We'll uh, see what we got. Okay, let me tighten the rest of this up. Let's get our height right. Oops. We've got eight. What are we looking for? Eight seven five. Seven inches. Eight seven five. My God, we hit it on the money. No, eight seven five. Eight seven five. Okay, we got to go up a bit. And of course, we just bottomed out. Okay, there's a little bit more than 875. We're tight there. We're tight here. We're tight here. And we should be able to just roll right into that hole without any problem. There we go. Well, let's find the, the end here so we don't have to go too far. And we'll put our carriage stop in.
got a super negative rake on it. <sighs> okay, so. It's, it's not even coming close to cutting. It's just rubbing. All right, well, there's, there's only one thing I can think to do. It, uh, this is uh, ridiculous. This has got, but the problem is, is I have to use it. I need it. I need it today. And it must have a five degree rake on it. So how's any bit going to start to dig in there? And this is a boring bar. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to build a sleeve that this, that'll fit over this fairly tight, cut the sleeve and make it a compression sleeve and then put that in the, oh, I'm sorry, in the, uh, in the uh, mounting. And then I can rotate this however I need to rotate it. All right, so we've got uh, just a, a random outside diameter figured out here. And now all we need to do is come in and drill the center of this out and <laughs> bore it. Oh, I don't know. We'll just try drilling it very carefully. You can see that bit bouncing around. We don't want it bouncing around. So we're going to get a shorty bit here. Let's see what we can do with that. Just to get a good start going. Let's give that a look and see what we've got. To the end of the flutes, it's three inches, and this is about three inches, so we can, we've got room to cut off and room to grab it. So there's our pilot. Now we want to go to our full size hole, which is. half inch. Oops, wait a second. Jesus, they have three flats on this thing. It's right at a half inch. All right, let's take a half inch drill all the way in. See what happens there.
All right. Pretty thin walled, but enough to grab it and enough to squeeze it. And that's all we want. I'm going to take it over to the um, to the hacksaw and cut it off and then bring it back and clean it up and then we're going to cut right down the center of it and I'm not sure how we're going to do that just yet. I'll be All right. Well, from here we're going to come in and just uh, kind of clean up that inside edge just a little bit. Or not the edge. The end. Let's have a look and see if it's going to fit and it's going to fit just about perfect so now all we have to do is cut it off and we've got something or cut a slice down the end and we could do the official version and cut it with the saw and make everything all really nice and finished or we could just drop it on the hacksaw Of course, we got to be a lot more careful here. It is warming up so we got a nice cut going there let me go get a little coolant all right we're going to bring the water over here rather than walk back and forth 22 times all right so the bottom is pretty well cut Now we're just kind of working toward the top. Let's see what it's going to take to give this get this thing to go. I believe we're up on the upper step here. We put our sleeve in and we need to uh, open up the bolts a little bit. Sleeve is in. Get it all the way to the end and what do we got size wise four and a half is where we want it to be that looks good cramp down on there on our sleeve We got a positive rake now, or at least, if anything, a neutral rake. It looks like a neutral. Let me tighten her up. Okay.
So this is the side we want to work with. And I think we're going to kick you up into the bracket. There we are. Let's bring this around. We're going to bring our boring bar around till it's square up with the piece. And hopefully it's going to fit. All right, so we're a little bit low probably. A little bit higher. it. Now, let's see how it's going to go. Not like that, that's for sure. It's hitting that bottom edge. God damn. You know, I bought this new. They said it was a half inch um, um, boring bar. Okay, you think half inch boring bar, which means it will fit within a half inch hole. I'm not thinking they're talking that. Okay, we're back. Uh, we've taken this brand new um, uh, boring bar. We've turned the, the surface down because it's too wide. It's a half an inch, and I need to go to a half an inch. We came in, we reduced the, uh, the back side of the, uh, the bar itself, and we came in and sharpened the um, insert on, uh, on my diamond wheel. So I have a nice sharp edge. I mean, it's aluminum, and you know, hey, it is what it is. Today's Saturday. There's no going buying another uh, 
another um, boring bar and I need to get this job done. So there we go. So we're going to run this in. Uh, let's see. Let's get that closer to center. And see if it's going to rub anywhere. Yep, it's rubbing right there. God damn it. Well, better I catch it now. I've uh, put uh, Dicom on it and ran it in. And you can see right there at the base, it's rubbing. But nowhere else along the shaft here, which is great. Well, a little bit back here, maybe. We might just take a little bit of that off, but that could just be because it's uh, sitting forward, sitting forward this way. So we're going to take a little bit off of that right there, and we will come back. Okay, so we ground it down. We got a little dicom on there so we can see if it's rubbing anywhere. And put this back in somewhere. If it goes in there. There we go. get my level, drop it on the bit itself, and bring it to, to some kind of level. Oops, down, down. There we go. Run it in. See if we got any rubbins anywhere. Well, I'm seeing that it's rubbing. Well, let's uh, let's check our height. Maybe we could get a little bit more height on that, and we might be able to cover it. We're at 875. We could go up just a little bit to 900. A little more dicum. Sliding all the way in, sliding all the way back. I'm not seeing any contact. Nope. Let's give it a try. And you'll see that this thing is jumping all over the place. But what happened was is is I turned it around, I got, I indicated the hole on the other side, uh, out here, got it indicated, I turned this to the indication, right, brought it back in, left myself a little room here, and then clamped it down and indicated this with the four jaw, and that brought this hole in line. Now this hole is going to be the big one, uh, here. So no problem, we can come off on that one. What, what's important is this one here, and I've got 25 thousandths left to cut off of that hole before, um, you know, I, I gotta destroy it. Okay, so uh, I gotta put it out of its misery. Uh, so we're gonna cut the big hole first so we can see, look in and see the small hole. And the big hole, let's take a measurement. The depth of the big hole is right here. <clears throat> we'll 
put ourselves a little mark right there and that way we know exactly where we're supposed to go to. Alright, let's get rolling. Well, okay, that inner hole is out by maybe 20 thousandths. That's a lot because I only have about 25 left to uh, to cut before I reach my size. So I'm not sure what we're going to do here. Uh, I don't think I can reach in. No, I can't. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll cut about a quarter inch of that smaller diameter and see what we end up size-wise because uh, if it's too much, I've got, well, actually, you know what? That's not gonna work. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so it's high right there. Okay, we're down to the last uh, six or seven thousandths in that hole there. So uh, let's see what we can do. So we've got three more thousands. And we're going to take this very slowly. There's two. All right, we're down to uh, exactly 48 and we need to go to 48 and a half. So uh, I'm not gonna chance it. I wanna get this rough edge off. Then let's just go ahead and run a piece of sandpaper in there 
and uh, see what we can do about uh, getting it up that half thousandths. And I'm running some pretty fine sandpaper here uh, just to see what I can do. Okay, that part is done. Now I want to do the outside surface. Okay, Nick Collier here. And after messing with that boring bar over and over and over again, get that thing so it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't rub. <clears throat> we bored it, and it wouldn't bore a good hole. I mean, it bored a good hole. It just wouldn't bore a clean hole. So um, I dug around, and uh, turns out of the very few reamers that I have, I found uh, the almost perfect reamer. And uh, so once I got it reasonably bored, which means the hole was straight, then I ripped, excuse me, I ran the reamer in and uh, that brought it up to size within two thousandths. And so I needed to go two thousandths more. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I can't get my finger in there to, to, uh, to, um, sand it i can't uh, you know what can i do so I'm, I'm thinking and thinking and i remember that i have a set of adjustable reamers now I, you know i don't know if you've used adjustable reamers but they're a pain in the fucking ass they don't work for doodly squat if you're trying to do it by hand because they grab and they pull and they you know they just chew up the hole but on a lathe or in a mill an adjustable reamer works great. So I pulled out the reamer and I'll show you that in a second. And we ran it through the hole and we're almost up to size right now. So we'll, uh, we'll come back. We'll get in a little closer and look at this. And as with anything, when you're dealing with a super accurate surface, and uh, of course I can't pull this thing out and, and measure from the backside. All I can do is measure from the front side. Um, and we've got just about enough to get in there and take a measurement from the, the hole itself. And just pulls a, a snug fit. And we are looking at, you know what, I need my glasses. Where did they go? All right, let's see what we've got. We're sitting right at zero. Well, maybe four tenths under. No, right at a little bit snug. One measurement I get four tenths under, and the other measurement I get right at. Anyhow, we're a little bit under zero, which would be 625. Five eighths. Now, the original uh, sleeve that I so generously messed up measures at a 
thou and a half over. So we still got a thousandths and a half to go. And uh, we're going to bring our adjustable reamer in. And uh, I've already made my cut. So what I want to do is uh, adjust the reamer. So I'm going real slow because last thing I want to do is make this thing too big. So we're just going to take it a quarter turn, run it in there. and see what will come up. And I'm, I'm going, I'm traveling real slow because uh, if you'll notice, and I'll, I'll go ahead and open this up. You notice there's only one place where the reamer actually works. It's right in this area right here, because it's, this is a tapered reamer, which means that you know, and it, they they make it as a hand reamer. So if they want this part to be um, uh, smaller, so that it tapers up to it, so that you can get it in the hole and get it kind of started, and then you just work your way in. Now, on the lathe, that's not necessary. All right, let's see. Okay, so um, we've taken our slug out and turned it around, and now we're we're going to indicate to the part that we machined earlier and come back in and clean up this last little bit right here. So, uh, and we're sitting at about oh, I don't know, fifteen thousandths or so out. So we'll go ahead and. Tighten that up. All right, now we're about ten. And let's see if we can just snug it down. Yes, we can. Okay, so now we're fairly close. We're going to make sure everybody's tight. All right, that's good. And we're down to just a few thousands. We can just tighten it up a little more and get it. I'm seeing that we're we're at about a half a thou, and that's good enough. We're just basically cleaning this up and doing the end. Okay, so now we're going to. Take that out. Well, actually, that that bit may work perfect here. So we're gonna gonna switch it around and see what we can come up with. Yeah.
Nice. So one thing I forgot to do is measure the length of this. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're just going to get a general measurement. We're a little over four inches there and we are right at four inches there. Hundred over four inches. That's the end of that. Uh, I think what we want to do is uh, throw just a little bit of, well, I think we'll just leave it like it is. We are, oh, no, we got one more step, or two more steps. And this, these two steps will happen over at the mill. We have to take and put a couple of set screws in. And that won't be too difficult. Okay, well, we got it done. And, of course, I forgot to film the part where I'm drilling the two uh, set screw holes. But, you know, you've seen set screw, set screw holes before. So, uh, you know, we don't have to do that. But uh, here's the piece. Uh, Let's come in close here so you can see it. And that is going to pretty much round it up for that. I send that back to uh, my customer in Washington State. And uh, hopefully he's going to be happy. And this is Nick Collier checking out.